Welcome to your deep dive. We got an interesting article from one of our listeners, and it really digs into NASA's Artemis program. Hey. A hundred billion dollars wow. to get humans back on the moon. Is it worth it? Is this a giant leap for humankind or just a giant leap for, well, government spending? Ooh, good question. That's what we're going to unpack today. And to help us navigate this celestial maze, we have our resident space expert mm. ready to launch into this thing. Always ready to talk space. Let's do it. Okay, so the article starts by reminding us it's been over 50 years since the Apollo missions. Yeah. I mean, that's that's like two generations, right? So for those of us who don't have those iconic images seared into our brains, remind us, what's the goal of Artemis? So Artemis wants to kind of pick up where Apollo left off. We're talking like a sustainable human presence on the moon, not just a quick visit, not just planting a flag and coming home, but like really setting up shop. And the idea is that this is going to lay the groundwork for all kinds of future missions, scientific research, maybe even lunar industries at some point. Like yeah. it really is, you know, a potential launch pad to the rest of the solar system. They're thinking big. Yeah. Ambitious for sure. But this article doesn't hold back. They're saying it's more about politics than actual scientific advancement. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's, you know, it's hard to ignore the political dimensions of space travel, right? I mean, look back at the space race. It wasn't just about exploring the unknown. It was definitely about uh, national pride and showcasing your capabilities on a global stage. So, yeah, I think the article makes a fair point there. A successful Artemis mission would be a huge, uh, well, a huge feather in our cap globally speaking. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about the elephant in the room, this price tag. Yep. Nearly $100 billion, and we haven't even left Earth's orbit yet. So where is all that money going? Yeah, yeah. Let's break it down. So first yeah. up, you've got the Space Launch System. That's a mouthful, right? SLS. The SLS. This is the giant rocket that's supposed to get us there. And get this, it's already cost a whopping $23.8 billion just to develop. And each launch, hold on to your hat, estimated at around $4 billion a pop. Four billion dollars per launch. Yeah. That's a lot of zeros. It's a lot of zeros. Okay, so what makes this thing so expensive? I mean, we launch rockets all the time. Well, that's that's actually a key point that the article brings up. See, the SLS is expendable. So every time we launch one, it's a one-way trip. It's like a, uh, well, it's like using a, a brand new car for a one-time road trip and yeah. then just leaving it there. Okay, so like not great for the environment, for one thing, but also not exactly budget-friendly. Exactly. And, you know, you contrast that with what SpaceX is doing with their reusable Falcon 9 and Starship. Those are designed to launch, land, and then launch again, which obviously brings the cost down significantly in the long run. Okay, so we're talking reusable versus single use. Makes sense why there's such a price difference. But I'm guessing the rocket is only part of this budgetary black hole. Oh, you are absolutely right. Don't forget about the Orion spacecraft. Oh, right. That's our ride. That's the capsule that's actually carrying the astronauts to the moon and back. And, well, it's had its fair share of hiccups. Like what? They had this issue with the heat shield, would you believe it? Oh, wow. Pretty important part. And despite already sinking $20 billion into it. Not exactly a glowing track record so far. Yeah. Anything else we're forgetting in this this massive budget? Oh, we can't leave out the Lunar Gateway. So this is a planned space station that'll orbit the moon. And uh, yeah, tack on another $5 billion for construction. And that's not even factoring in the estimated $1 billion per year to maintain it. $1 billion a year to keep the lights on. Essentially, yeah. And remember, all of this is happening within NASA's already existing budget, which has its own constraints. Right. So they're not just pulling this money out of thin air. Unfortunately not. So it's not just about getting to the moon. It's about staying there, establishing a permanent presence. And that's a whole other ball game in terms of cost. Exactly. The article makes some really good points about whether this is all really justified, you know, especially with the advances we've made in robotic missions. Those can accomplish amazing things at a fraction of the cost. It's true. I mean, look at what we're doing on Mars with rovers, right? Sending back all this data, and it's a fraction of the cost of a human mission. Hmm. So why even bother sending people? Why not just send a fleet of, like, super smart robots to build us a moon base? That's the question, isn't it? And it's a good one. Like, I'll give you, the article makes a really compelling point there. Right. Because robots are amazing at certain things, right? Gathering data, mapping terrain, even conducting experiments all remotely. Hmm. But they lack that human touch. They don't have that adaptability, that intuition, you know? So you're saying a robot might miss something that a human would pick up on? 
Exactly. But, They're following their programming, right? So a robot might completely overlook an unusual rock formation or like some weird change in the environment. But a human, we're curious, we notice things, we can adapt our plans on the fly, and that can lead to, well, who knows, groundbreaking discoveries, things a robot wouldn't even register. Okay, so there's something to be said for having, well, boots on the ground, or boots on the moon, I guess, in this case. Exactly. But the article also talks about SpaceX and their Starship program. Right. And they seem to be doing things a little differently. In fact, they claim Starship could be a much more cost-effective way to get to the moon. Yeah. So what's the deal with SpaceX? Are they giving NASA a run for their money? Oh, absolutely. SpaceX is like the the disruptor in the room. They've really shaken things up. And their whole thing with reusable rockets, like the Falcon 9 and now Starship, <laughs> it's potentially a game changer when it comes to cost. Okay, how so? Well, imagine if launching a rocket was more like, I don't know, taking a flight across the country. You wouldn't just use the plane once and then throw it away, right? Yeah. That's what SpaceX is going for, reusable spacecraft. And that reusability, it could drastically lower operational costs. Okay, so that makes sense. But where does Starship fit into all of this? So Starship is their next big thing. It's designed to be fully reusable, and it's meant to transport both cargo and crew, not just to the moon, but potentially Mars and beyond. And if it works as planned, we're talking about making space travel significantly more affordable, more accessible. Wow. So this could be huge. But how does this all play with NASA and the Artemis program? Mm -hmm. Is it like a competition or is there room for a collaboration? That is the million dollar question. And the article does touch on that, this whole idea of NASA potentially partnering with private companies. Okay. And there are definitely pros and cons. On the one hand, imagine the possibilities. NASA could tap into SpaceX's technology, their infrastructure, right. speed up the timeline, maybe save some money. Sounds like a win-win. Right. But on the other hand, it raises some concerns about relying too heavily on commercial companies for something so, so critical to, like, national interests. So it's a trade-off. You're relying on someone else's technology, potentially losing some control. Exactly. And... You know, some experts argue that this could create, like, long-term dependencies that might not be in the best interest of space exploration as a whole. It's a tough one. Yeah, it's like walking a tightrope. You want to be innovative. You want to collaborate. But you also don't want to give up control or compromise on your own capabilities. Exactly. It's a balancing act, for sure. And speaking of balancing acts, the article also brought up another concern with Artemis. What we might be sacrificing to make it happen. Specifically, other scientific programs that are being put on hold or even canceled to free up funding for this lunar ambition. Is that something we should be worried about? So it's a trade-off, right? We're talking about pushing the boundaries of human exploration, but it comes with a cost. What are we potentially sacrificing here to make Artemis happen? What other scientific projects are being impacted by this? Yeah, the article specifically points to a few. Like, for example, the Veritas mission to Venus. That one was going to study Venus's crazy hot atmosphere and volcanic activity. Really interesting stuff. Wow. And then there's the Viper Lunar Rover. That was going to search for water ice on the moon, which, you know, pretty important if you're planning on setting up a permanent base there. Right. Water is kind of essential. <laughs> exactly. And then there's the NEO Surveyor Telescope. That one was designed to hunt for those, you know, potentially dangerous asteroids, the ones that could pose a threat to Earth. So we're talking about potentially delaying vital planetary science, maybe even asteroid defense initiatives, all to get back to the moon faster. These are some pretty big decisions with, you know, possibly far-reaching consequences. Absolutely. And that's what makes this whole thing so complicated, right? It's not just about the money. It's about priorities. Every dollar that goes to Artemis is a dollar that can't go somewhere else. Right, right. It's a zero-sum game in a way. Exactly. So, yeah, tough choices all around with no easy answers definitely a lot to unpack there. And, you know, it's interesting. We've talked a lot about the financial costs, the technological challenges, but there's another aspect to this whole thing that, that we haven't really touched on, the environmental impact. Right. Is that something we should be thinking about too, even if the article doesn't really address it? Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, it's not always the first thing that comes to mind, but space exploration does have an environmental footprint. And as we're getting more ambitious, going further, launching more frequently, it's definitely something we need to pay closer attention to. So what are some of the environmental concerns with space exploration, especially as it relates to Artemis? 
Well, space debris is a big one, right? Like uh-huh. every time we launch a rocket, we're leaving a trail of junk behind. Junk like what? Spent rocket stages, defunct satellites, even tiny fragments of material. And all that stuff can stay up there in orbit for decades, potentially colliding with other spacecraft. And the more we launch, especially with these big mega rockets, the worse the problem gets. So it's like we're littering in space. Kind of, yeah. It's like we're so focused on reaching new horizons that we're not always thinking about the mess we're leaving behind. So what can we do about it? How do we make space exploration more sustainable, more responsible? Well, it's a multi-pronged approach for sure. We need to get serious about developing and implementing better technologies for space debris mitigation. Like, imagine deorbiting systems for old satellites, even active debris removal missions. Like a space cleanup crew. Exactly. And of course, international cooperation is key here. Space exploration can't just be a free-for-all. We need everyone on the same page, establishing clear guidelines and regulations for responsible behavior in space. Okay, so it's not just about rockets and science. It's about being mindful of our impact on the environment, even in space, Mm. and working together to protect it. 100%. As we push the boundaries of exploration, we got to do it ethically, sustainably. You know, we're not just exploring for ourselves, we're exploring for future generations. That's a really good point. Well, we've covered a lot of ground today, from the financial nitty gritty to the ethical dilemmas, a hundred billion dollars to get back to the moon. Is it worth it? I guess that's up for each of us to decide. Right. It's about what we value as a society, the future we want to build, both here on Earth and beyond. Absolutely. Well, a lot to think about, that's for sure. Big thanks to you, our resident space expert, for breaking it all down for us. Anytime. Happy to be here. And to all of you listening, thanks for joining us for another deep dive. Keep those questions coming. Until next time, keep exploring.